How's it going guys? Hope you guys are having a great day. If you don't know who I am, this is Winter Horse Creations. From the time of recording, I've got 30 subscribers, so I am kind of a big deal. So today I'm making a Yanagiba. Now if you're not familiar with what a Yanagiba is, it's Japanese style knife formerly used in sashimi, which is cutting raw fish into thin slices, so it's a fairly specialised knife. The aim of a chef is to cut the meat into one clean slice without multiple passes. Now the steel I'm using today is blue paper steel. It's a high carbon steel that is made in Japan. It's fairly thick and not very wide. That's actually why I went with the Anagiba style. So what you saw me do was round over the spine, chaw and recast over the knife. Now the most important part is to round over where the transition of the recasso to the bolster or handle is because if you have that hard nine it can act as stress rise and snap in half. And trust me I know. Therefore when heat treating I round everything over except the edge and also 36 grit scratches can also play a factor. This is a powder used called Sagnite and it's going to act as a heat sink on the knife so it will slow the fast cooling process when you go to quench it. Now I'm not sure how much this clay will help on such a thick knife. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll guarantee you I'll be happy. I'll also guarantee you I'll be in denial. Now to make a mind, you usually water quench your knives, like how the Japanese do with their knives and swords. But nowadays you can use a professional quench oil to get the same activation in the mine but without the risk. Or you could do an interrupted quench, going into water, then into an oil, quickly, which is the route I'll be going today. And then honestly, I don't know why I went that way, because I got the professional oil, so I didn't need to do that. The interrupted quench is more for, say, you had peanut oil or motor oil, I'm assuming, so don't know why I went that route. <coughs> At the moment, I just fold test the knife to see how hard it is, which it is actually not. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy, I'm so happy, you can't tell I'm in denial. I fold test to the side, I'm not grinding the bevel on, in which I'll notice in 3, 2, 1. Wait, did I just fold test that on the wrong side? Okay, I've got a new game plan. I'm going to go and pre-grind the knife completely flat on one side, and do the bevel on the right side and go probably half a thickness. I just think I went too thick in the quench and also I didn't soak the knife long enough. The edge is still pretty thick. Now obviously it's a chisel grind so you grind on one side and this is a right handed knife. Is your left hand and then that's what you get for being left hand I guess. Okay, this is a bit of an update. I've quenched it and she skates by really easy, so that's a lot better. Okay, last time I didn't show you guys testing the knife, so I'm gonna do that now. For this knife here, it's sharp, kind of sharp. I mean, I don't need it. It's off the belt, so, I mean, it cuts. I left maybe less than 0.5 of a mil on the edge, and then I radiused it off. The reason why I did that is because I want to minimize the damage, if it takes any, on the actual copper test, the stainless steel test. If I had had its finished grind, it would just probably take big chunks out of it and then I have to bring it back and then shorten this. If I have it fairly thick on the edge, the amount of damage would be not that much. But the aim is to weld this, do whatever, and then see if it will still cut paper. You can see on the edge right here it chipped. The rest is pretty good but that little area chipped so I need to bring the temper back just tiniest bit. Okay it's still chipping very tiny 
so I'm going to bump it up to 140. And I reckon that will do. The edge geometry I ended up making is a bit thin, so I did end up rolling the smallest amount, but I'd rather take a roll than a chip. The aim is to find a perfect balance point between the too hard and too soft. So initially it was chipping, implying it was too hard, but I brought the tamper up to the point that it's no longer chipping, but neither too soft, that is deflecting the edge like a ribbon or completely curling the edge over. I originally tempered this knife in the oven at 120, which is quite inaccurate. When I say oven, I mean home oven. Then I went to the kiln to get the right temperature, so that could also play a factor. Okay, the hermione thought it might play a cool joke of me and go right down to the edge. I did file tests on the hardened area and the area with the hermione, and honestly, it was not as soft as you would think. I could hear the difference in the sound, and the file did cut, but you really had to give it to it in order to make it. But regardless, now I can't sell this blade. But the only reason I'm proceeding with this is the fact that the hermione is on the heel, and you'll most likely use the belly of the knife than the heel, so it won't affect the user for performance that much. And I also spent a lot of hours and money on this, so I yeah, really don't want to start again. <laughs> actually quite like hand sanding because you're forced to do it you can sit back and relax and just watch your favorite show yeah, I like the way you did that so I got this knife hand sanded I protected it in wax and then wrapped it up in tape sometimes when you just wrap it straight up in tape you can rust like underneath the tape so make sure you do have a wax or a something on it now I've got a piece of rod on here for the bolster and I want to have the handle be ebony I want to add a new technique just to learn it which is a marquetry based you know I've got all these things a mate gave me of mother pearl and I want to learn marquetry with uh, this abalone shell and mother pearl so I want to give that a go so yeah I want to just start with this bolster That's better. OK, 
Okay, I made a little little template. So that's going to go on the knife. It's not actually part of the knife. It's just what I used to get everything square. So I drill the hole, tap that on, you know, fit it up like usual. What I did was just make sure everything's even all the way around, nice and square. So I can tap this bolster on. And then we'll just make it a little bit easier to see if things are in line. So you can see that's out of square by a little bit. So I'm going to get a scribe, mark that around, and then go to those lines. slides on now it's near focus on is back in That's insane in the membrane. I wonder what you guys think of this inlay. Keep in mind, this is my first time doing this style and I know I need a lot more hours doing it to even get decent at it, but that's why I'm doing this. Now, the dust that comes off the mother pearl is carcinogenic or toxic. I did a little test piece without a mask, obviously not knowing how bad it is, but once I looked up a tutorial, I became aware of the health effects. Now, 
now obviously with a mask on and I'm cautious. So my goal is to make you guys aware, if not already, and just to, like if you are going to do this in the future, just keep that in mind and take care of yourselves. Because I was just careless. This is hydrochloric acid, which is way more dangerous than the diluted ferric I'm used to working with. So I've got gloves and face shield on and a neutralizer on standby. Now remember, I've wrought iron as the fittings in which I'm matching, which gives off a wood-like grain effect due to the impurities in the steel and is quite desirable. And also, the fact with wrought iron, it's a historical material as well. Let's just give this a... Uh Bit of a squirt. I'm just using whatever this is called. But it's food safe oil. Spray it on the fittings. Start off with the wrong thing first. Fitting was a lot better with a bolster against a Ricasso, but what happened was this area here had a little bit of rust, so I had to re-sand the uh, top. And after re sand the top, it obviously took a little bit of material away. Now the fitting's not as good. And also I think when I etched it, it could have played a part as well. So that's when I etched the bolster, you know. Now this goes on. Yeah, I don't know which way this goes. And if you know, I just need to turn it up. If you look at it, guess it's all right. Hmm. I you stand back, close your eyes. A little bit better. I know I've got an idea. <laughs> Well, that's better. I don't know, tell me what you guys think. But yeah, I'll get this handle all oiled up properly and then I'll give you some shots of it. And I'll sharpen the blade a little bit. Ah, uh, this is like not a high polish, it's a 1200 grit. In the past, I went really high with the polish and then what happens is it doesn't really, like as soon as you use it, it oxidizes obviously, so the hormone that you spent so long trying to get just disappears. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've got a mosaic chef knife and the kitty build coming up in the future. So if you want to see that, please subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day.